Okay, the next video on UID template creation, we were talking about data input forms. So we have a working template design. It converts automatically between construct one and two. Uh, it has data syntax filters built in to keep us from putting in illegal characters per mill standard 130. But we don't really want uh, shop floor users getting into the design of this template and messing with this just to, re to define a value. So Bartender includes, in addition to this template tab here for the design, it has a form tab. And in the form, you can put controls that are linked to the variables within the physical printed design so that you can separate the two operations, data entry from printed artwork. And the way that that works is you can start up here at view uh, and under toolbox hit data sources. Uh, if you're in the design window, you will also have options for um, components, which we'll get into at the end of this video, and layers, uh, which we won't deal with right now. But if you are in the form only, those other two items don't really make much sense. So uh, data sources is the only option there. Now, to quickly create a form, you can just take your named variables and drag them over. And you can pick what kind of data input form you want to create. And I'll just do that for the other two here as well, part number and serial number. We'll just leave it at that for right now. And as with any other barcode uh, or bartender feature, if you double click on it, you'll get into the properties and you'll see here under link data source, it's set to the variable that was over here. So that's the advantage of dragging it over. Now, you can also create things manually by going up to create data entry form, right? And you can pull things over that way. But this is a quick way of getting it to come over uh, without having to make that linked, um, that linked uh, data connection. Now, you can move the label for this uh, top or left. Um, you can move them then as an entity uh, together, right? You can do all that. Now, uh, enter data is pretty generic, right? So once again, we'll double click. Some of the other per parameters on the left hand side that you can create um, or you can edit would be over here. And here I can just put in a label and I'll put in cage code. Uh, I'll go down to the next one and type in part number. And here I'll put in serial number, right? And if you want, you can <clears throat> make everything bold. You can change the size on it to something smaller, larger. You can change them individually or as a group. It doesn't really matter. Okay. One last feature that's really nice to put into a um, input form is a preview of the template that you're going to print. And that gives people a lot more confidence that the changes they're putting in are actually going to end up on the label. So we can do that in this way. Just throw them uh, throw this image on here and now when we go to print here I'll just do a preview real quick preview again I'm not really printing so I'm just going to keep it at the PDF printer I had now watch as I start typing I'm going to type in numbers and it'll stop at five even though I'm keep on typing it's just going to stop at five and same thing with part number it's set to go a maximum of 15 and allow um, uh, a dash, but no other other special character. And same thing with serial number. I'll put in a combination of things here. Right now, um, one other weird uh, rule in the you know, standard 130 realm, anyway, is that you can't use O in the creation of a part number, but you can in the creation of a serial number. So. Uh, that's also a data filter that's built in there. And notice as we start typing, things just start changing, the barcode and the text at the same time. So this gives you some confidence that what you're creating is actually legal and, and affecting both barcode and text. Now again, watch what happens when we do no part number. Now you can see I've got a little display problem here, so I'm going to go back before I waste a label. I'm going to go back and fix this so that that doesn't happen. But this gives you a very quick way of, of going through and seeing 
what's going to be printed. And then you can follow up with preview, but uh, you know, you already got your preview here. So I'm just going to hit cancel. Now let's fix this um, issue that we had with long serial numbers, not um, long serial numbers were wrapping. So I'm going to move that maybe up to the next lowest value. Uh, what do we do? Make that a little longer. I'm trying to think of what we could do to make that a little bit more reasonable. Um, yeah, I think I think that might be okay. Here, let's move it down a little. And again, we'll do that. Now let's see what happens then. If we make this um, as long of a serial number as we need to, what happens? Well, that looks fine there. And if we do the same thing for part number, still no problem. Same thing on the uh, gauge code, no problem. All right, this is a really nice thing, even for designing, because now you can play with, if you have like a description field on it, you can play with, what's it going to look like when I have a super long description versus a short one? You can play with these before you actually commit to um, using this with any one of a million records in a database. You can kind of go through and see what it's going to look like at those extremes. Anyway, this is a really nice feature. You, you've got to admit this is really nice to see things change as you type. And we've got filters in here to basically morph in between. Let's see if we actually did this right. Yep, look at that. It actually fits this time. So uh, we have something that supports Construct 1 and 2, has data filters in it, uh, character filters in it, uh, even can suppress lines if we have Construct 1. Um, and this looks pretty good, right? Well. You know, we actually at ID integration go one step further on that. So we we have what we call a master template that sometimes we'll use just as a, either as training or a demonstration where we can take all of that technology I've just shown you and expand it to something like this, where in red I'm showing um, a non-printing representation of what's in the barcode. But if I were to change my um, uh, to, to our cage code, for example, same kind of deal. It changes in the text, changes here. You can see I'm using um, prefixes that are from a different family uh, of UID. But if I change over here to a different uh, library of prefixes, then that changes there. I can even make it so that it's caged instead of manufacturer. And if I'm not the manufacturer, but rather a service provider, I can do that as well. Now, again, for those of you who are uh, knowledgeable enough about UID, when you get to service providers and construct one, the prefect changes even further, right, to UCN. So we can support any version of any style of UID with this one form. Even if I put in a part number here, right, and it's construct two, but I select construct one styles up here, it'll just ignore it. Dunn's numbers doesn't matter. It, it really, I can even do, even do um, I think Dodax are in here. See this Dodax one? So if I do that, I got four characters there and it won't let me because it, it'll call it. Well, you got five, five characters, not six. But as soon as I put a sixth character up here, boom, it changes it to Dodax. Regardless of what I've got selected here. I've got six characters up here, so it forces it to be a Dodax. Right, so filters, suppression, visual basic scripting, all of these high tech things can be employed to create one bartender template that can automatically morph between all of these different UID styles that are allowed by MIL standard 130. And even I even have things that are these concatenated uh, versions, like if I go back to making that. Um, just five characters and I want to use an 18s um, that's what I can get there so you can hopefully appreciate the power of using bartender to simplify the full library of UID styles that can be employed throughout a larger corporation doesn't matter what your contract requests for a certain UID style you can actually do one bartender template will automatically morph in between these.